Do you love the high-end looks at stores like Kirkland's and Pottery Barn, but you don't shop there often because your bill can get real expensive really quick? Well, today's video is for you. I am duping a ton of high-end looks for Christmas for a fraction of the cost to help you do Christmas decor on a budget. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge shout out to my whiskey craft buddies who come back week after week to DIY with me. If you aren't already a craft buddy, no worries. Just head down and hit subscribe. That way you won't miss any future Christmas DIYs or budget home decor videos. Also, a huge thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the first two. So last year, Anthropology had a really fun gingerbread doormat, and I wanted to make one like it, but I didn't get around to it. Well, this year, Grandin Road has one that is over 70 bucks, and I decided to dupe it with a Walmart doormat, but you could get these anywhere. You just want a plain version of these doormats. I started by measuring the long side and realized it was 30 inches wide, so I measured 15 inches in the center for the point of my house, and then I also marked 10 inches and 20 inches, so I knew which third each house would fit into. Then following the picture almost to a T, I used some craft sticks because I couldn't find my ruler, but you can use a ruler and created the peak of the center one and then the different tops of the houses as well as the chimneys. So I'm just looking at the picture and trying to recreate the best I can. Once I had everything roughed out the way I wanted, I took my tin snips and cut it. It was just a lot easier to cut it that way. Shake off all of your extra pieces from cutting your doormat apart. And then I took some tape just to really help make my outside lines straight, clean, crisp. So I'm just using a regular paintbrush and acrylic paint to start to apply it around the outside. I did the bottom and both sides as well as the peak of the middle house just so I could get them to be very symmetrical. Then it was time to rough out everything else. So I used more white paint and got everything where it needed to be. I just followed the picture again. It's kind of a paint by numbers. And then I realized that it really made it pop with a second coat of the white paint. So here it is after the first coat. And then if you look, the one on the right has the second coat. So it's just more vibrant. So I decided to do the whole thing just over one more time. Once it was dry, I wanted to seal it, so I took it outside and it looks like the seasons are confused here with my leaves, but I just used some clear spray paint and gave it a really good coat all around. So then that way that paint was going to be locked in in case it got wet. I don't recommend like putting a ton of snow on it. It's definitely decorative, but I want to make sure the whole thing didn't fall apart. On top of the fact that this looks great, I was able to make it for under $10, which is so much cheaper than that other one. I think they look very similar. Each season, I get inspired by the holiday art that Kirkland's puts out, and then I take that, use it as inspiration, and create some free printables for you guys to print and frame that are inspired by the themes that I'm seeing in the Kirkland's art. I print these on my HP printer, and they print really nicely. This is the Dustjet 3752. I will link it down below. It's under 100 bucks. I got mine at Target, and it prints my printables really nicely. So I know. A lot of you ask, what printer do I use? I print them out, I pop them into frames and they work super well. I love this Norman Rockwell one. I found a free print of this, so I just resized it and included it in the pack for you guys. Skates, some Holy Family prints, some winter scenes, a ton of options and they layer really well. Last year I did a variation on this metal nativity scene silhouette, but this year I found a much closer dupe that's more substantial. I grabbed this nativity set half off at Hobby Lobby and I got all my pieces out and laid them out to figure out how I wanted them to sit. Now these again had rough edges like the nutcrackers, so I sanded them down and once everything was where it needed to be, I grabbed a scrap piece of my one by two, laid out all my pieces and figured out how long I wanted my base to be. I marked it and went outside and cut it with my saw, but you could use a miter box. And if you don't want to do this thick of wood, you could also easily do this on paint stir sticks as well. I sanded my wood and then gave it a quick stain with Early American by Minwax. And then I took all of my pieces and spray painted it with flat black spray paint. Now you could stain these wood pieces and that would look gorgeous too, but I like the black silhouette look, so to each their own. When my pieces were dry, I laid them out on my stained piece of wood and used some super glue gel to adhere everything in place. I let it dry overnight and this thing was ready to go. 
Now, I love the scale of this. I love how large it is. And I really love that I was able to make this dupe for less than 10 bucks. I have a feeling this will be around for years to come. It will look beautiful on a mantle or on a shelf. And it looks really great with that greenery in the background. Something else I fell in love with on the Pottery Barn site that was well out of budget were these modern nutcrackers. And Kirkland's had some, but they were still over $25 for one of them, made it really hard to justify the price. So I decided to get some unfinished ones and make them over myself. These are at Michael's, a lot of stores have them, but I ended up going with the Hobby Lobby option because their stuff is already half off and these were $9.99, making them $5 each. When I got them home, I removed the tags and then I used a little sanding block to remove any of the rough edges. A lot of these project pieces aren't sanded the best. And then I decided to use this English chestnut stain to stain them. I used a foam brush and I had to flood a lot of the areas with some excess stain and then use a paper towel to rub it off. That's how I was able to get the Nutcracker fully covered. And once he was done, I just let him dry overnight and I didn't worry about sealant because it's stain and these turned out really good. Now, something to keep in mind with these project pieces is that they typically use wood glue to put them together. So sometimes you'll get some unevenness, which I got with these, but I'm not unhappy with it. I like the rustic look, but I did just want to throw that out there. I love how these turned out and for a fraction of the price, the look can be yours. Now for those monochrome ones, if you're looking for more of a color or if you are a vibrant person and want a pink one or an orange one, you can spray paint them as well. They turn out really well. Heading into the Christmas season, it is hard to ignore that the cost of just about everything is going up. So in addition to DIYing, instead of buying high-end Christmas decor to help our family save, I am also using the free Upside app to help me earn cash back on purchases. I really like this free and easy to use app that is a must have for anybody who buys groceries, gas, or dines out. I personally use Upside to earn cash back on my gas that I'm going to buy anyway, so it is a no brainer. When it comes time to fill up, I search the area around me for participating stations and then I claim the offer that I want. So let's pick this BP one for 32 cents back and then you have a window to claim the offer which is shown in this blue box. Then it's as simple as heading to the station checking in on the app and paying as usual with a linked debit or credit card. You can search to find participating gas stations, grocery stores, and restaurants. And I've noticed they've been constantly adding new local businesses in my area. I like to let my cash back add up over time, but I can cash out at any time in a variety of different ways like direct deposit, PayPal, or I can opt in for an e-gift card for brands like Amazon and Home Depot. And lately I've been opting for a Starbucks gift card so I can treat myself. So to get started, grab your phone and download the free Upside app on either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Be sure to use my code WIT for $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Now let's get back into the DIYs. This is my third year doing Kirkland's dupes for Christmas and some of the items from last year have made their way back to the website. So I wanted to share some of my favorites from last year with you so that you know you can head over to that video and make those as well. The first being this adorable Santa tray. It is a fun and quick project. I have a free cut file for this and I used scrap wood and some cheap handles from the hardware store. It is super fun to put out for Christmas Eve and it would also be a great gift. I also love this Twas the Night Before Christmas sign that I'll have to find a new spot for in our house. It's a pretty quick and easy Cricut project. Again, another free cut file for you. And if you don't have a Cricut, no worries because this next one is going to blow your mind. I'm going to show you how to make a huge wood frame sign for a fraction. I'm talking pennies to the dollar of the Kirkland's version and I've got free files and the best part is you don't need any machines. These large signs that Kirkland's has every season are awesome because they really make a statement. However, to make this with wood, it is really heavy and to buy them, it's expensive. So I decided to grab some one by twos at Home Depot and these are like under $3 a piece and you need one eight foot section per sign. Then also for each sign, you're gonna want a piece of a Dollar Tree foam board. I'm making two signs, so I grabbed two. Start by taking your one by two and measuring the long section of your sign, which should be approximately 30 inches. Cut two of them and then measure a piece that will fit evenly in between the two of them to frame out your sign. Once you've cut all four pieces, your frame should look like this. And then you're gonna need some artwork for the inside. 
I decided to print 20 by 30 posters and don't pay full price at Walgreens. They're always running a deal. So Google for a coupon code, but I got half off. So each of these were 13 bucks for the prints. Something else to keep in mind while you're ordering these prints is that you're going to want approximately a two inch bleed around the outside with no artwork on it because you are going to put your frame on and you don't want to cover any words. So if you're designing in Canva like I like to, you can pull these little guides over and make sure you have a two inch border around the outside. Then that way you won't have your wood go over your letters. So I'm just laying down the border here and this is why we want to have our two inch bleed so then that way everything is clear of the outside. And then we're gonna mount this poster onto the foam board with some double stick tape. I make sure that the corners are covered and there's a decent amount in the center because then that way you won't have any gapping. I like to do the top first so I know it's gonna stay put and then peel the poster back and stick the other pieces down lower. Once that's done, you can line up your wood pieces again and then staple them to the sign on the back. Now I like to get one piece set and then continue around the outside so that you know everything is in the right spot just because you have to flip it over to staple it with your staple gun. You can get a cheap one like this at Walmart or any craft store. You don't need a fancy DeWalt one, that's just what we have. Once it's all hooked on, your sign is ready to go and if you have any ends that you need to trim like any overhang, just take an X-Acto knife and cut down that foam board, being careful not to cut your wood. I love how large these are. This sign is going to be awesome for my dining room this Christmas with all my gingerbread stuff and I love, love, love this setup. You can also go more neutral with this How the Grinch Stole Christmas print. I got that one from the Navage patch so I will be sure to link that down below so you can download that for free. They've got a ton of different pages and you could also do this with family pictures. You could print a picture poster. So tons of different options. I fell in love with this pillow on Pottery Barn's website, but unfortunately they're selling it for 60 bucks. The Kirkland's version on sale is about 23, but we're gonna make two for even less than that. I grabbed some of this chenille yarn at Hobby Lobby in red and white. And then we are going to make just a simple pillow base that we can wrap in the yarn. So I'm taking a leftover drop cloth that I'm not using right now and decided to use that as a fabric. You can use whatever fabric you have on hand. You can even use an old pillowcase. You just need some fabric. We're not gonna see it. I traced and cut out a shape of a candy cane and then I'm using my glue all around the outside except for the bottom opening so that I can stuff it. I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue glue sticks because I like the way that they hold and they are meant for fabric, wood, all the things. Then we're gonna take our fingers inside of our candy cane and flip it inside out. Just take your time and you can use your fingers to really push that curve back around. That's gonna give you a nice seam. Then I'm taking some stuffing from an old pillow and filling it out just to make sure it's nice and fluffy and plush. Then we're gonna seal off the bottom with some hot glue to make sure that all that stuffing is gonna stay in there. Then it's time to take our candy cane shape to the next level. I decided to start with red, but you could do whatever you're feeling. I took a piece, left a little bit of slack so that I could wrap it around the bottom and kind of glued it to the bottom of my pillow. Then with the hot glue, I'm going to continue to wrap and cover the bottom so that canvas drop cloth is not being seen underneath. Then I'm using my detailed glue gun, just gluing around and wrapping five layers. Then I switched to white, did five layers, cut the white, red. This is a great thing to do while you are binging shows. I think this night I was working on it and I was catching up on Bachelor in Paradise. So it's a great mindless task. Once you make your way around, you are done. And I ended up making two pillows. I had plenty left to make even two more pillows. So you don't even need the whole thing of yarn, which is great. You can use it for another project. I think I did pretty good duping this pillow, especially when you compare it to the Pottery Barn one. There's no comparison in price, but even with the Kirklands, I was able to make two. It would have been back up to $50 if I bought two of the Kirklands ones to balance out a couch. So if you're looking at all these different items that I'm using to stage and wondering where they're coming from, let me tell you, I will let you know. So these pedestals on the left are a dupe of a Grandin Road item. Now to get everything together, you're looking at over $150 for five. So I decided to do two, a large and a small pedestal from the fall section at Hobby Lobby, half off. And then I also grabbed two of these little candle wreaths half off. Now they do shed as you can see here, but I think they're so pretty, it's worth it. 
I ended up stacking them on top of the little pedestal. And then I added these flameless LED candles I got from Goodwill. They were two bucks a piece. This is super gorgeous. It looks very high end. And I was able to recreate that $100 plus look for about 35 bucks, which I love. The snowflakes that you're seeing in all of the vignettes actually came from Hobby Lobby. They sell a similar dupe to the Kirkland's ones that are much more expensive. So I ended up going with three different sizes. They range from $3.99 up to $9.99, but they're all half off, which is awesome. And you can also stack them to put a flameless candle on top to give some height to different vignettes. The actual greenery that you're seeing is a real feel one from Walmart that I think is a great deal. And the felt garland is also from Walmart under 13 bucks. I will link everything available online down below. We've got more doors that could take wreaths in this new house. So I decided to make a, another Christmas wreath and to make the bells, I started with these clearance cups that I found at Walmart. I started by spray painting them a black instead of the light gray so that would show through. So then we're gonna layer on some paint to make it look kind of like metal instead of plastic. Starting with a light gray and I'm going through with a disposable makeup sponge to kind of blotch it in, cover the entire thing. Then I'm going in with a little bit of black because it covered a little too much for my liking. I'm just dabbing that on lightly. Then to make it feel like metal, we're gonna do some metallic paint. So I did some silver metallic all around the edges, the tops and the bottom edge. And then I also went around the top edge and bottom edge with just some gold metallic paint and that really made it pop. I used my drill to pop holes in the top of all three of my bells. And then I used some thicker jute twine that I got from Walmart to tie them up as bells because they're gonna be hanging there. I didn't want the jute twine to fail me. Then I'm using a grapevine wreath that I already had, but you can get these at Michael's, Joann's, anywhere. And then I'm using some picks from Hobby Lobby, but again, you could do Walmart floral, Michael's florals, Joann's, wherever you find what you like. I just decided to do greenery and berries. I did six picks total, four of these evergreens, and then two of the berries. And I always like to start by doing a dry fit, which is basically just laying everything where you want it to go then that way you're not in a predicament if you start hooking things to the wreath and you realize you don't like it. Once I got an idea in my head, I took two of the bottom pieces, wrapped the centers together with that thicker jute twine, tied it off, and then I just used that to tie it directly to the grapevine wreath. Because the jute twine is a similar color, it's not going to stand out. And then also you could easily remove this rather than hot gluing if you want to reuse the wreath form later for a different season and not have to store it. I did the second piece the same way, but I left a little bit more slack so that I could add like a hanger at the top. And then I tied my berry stems together the exact same way and tied it on, trimmed the excess. Then I've got my three pieces of jute twine with my bells. I'm just tying that off. And I ended up having the bells hang on their own. So as you can see, there's two hangers that go up to the top. I just thought it was easier than having a ton of weight on one hanger. I think this looks super comparable to the one on the site, especially because I've got a toddler. So if something were to happen, I don't have metal bells coming down, they're plastic. I'm all about lightweight and saving money. For my gingerbread setup, I wanted one of these fun candy cane LED candles, but this price was crazy. So you can make this with an LED pillar candle from Dollar Tree, super easy peasy, but I decided to do a thicker one from Hobby Lobby just because I wanted a bigger size than what Dollar Tree could offer, but you could get LED candles anywhere, even the thrift store. I started with a thick painter's tape and did one piece on a diagonal and then used another piece as a spacer and I'm just continuing that all around my candle until everything is covered. Then we're going to cover it in Mod Podge to prepare it for our glitter. And I know you guys are thinking, Whitney, you hate glitter. Don't worry, I like this fine glitter just for Christmas and we're gonna seal it so it doesn't come off everywhere. I'm dumping this on top of some paper, but you could use a tin or a pan just to catch everything. And I'm also making sure that the glitter goes up on the edge of my candle so that it looks like a full little strip. In between dumps, I'm pouring it back into the container and that's why it's helpful to have the paper on the bottom. And I'm gonna continue to add Mod Podge around the outside. Once everything's covered, we're going to cover the glitter with Mod Podge. 
let it dry about halfway and then we're gonna add a little bit more glitter. I did two coats to make sure everything was coated. And then once you do that additional layer of glitter, we're gonna go back through and cover everything with more Mod Podge. Here's what it's gonna look like when it's covered with Mod Podge, but don't worry, it will dry like this. And then it's time to pull off that tape. So carefully pull it off, especially because if the Mod Podge dried on top of the tape as well as on the candle, you don't want to band-aid rip it. You wanna go slowly. And once you get going, make sure to pull it at a sharp angle like I'm doing here and you will be fine. Now to get off any random pieces of glitter, I just used a wet paper towel. I did that on the inside of the candle as well. And then I also sprayed a polycrylic sealant on the outside just to make sure that glitter was not going anywhere. But I absolutely love this in the red and white vibe. It looks great on those little pedestals. And this is going to live in my dining room with my gingerbread setup this Christmas. Now that we have a little bit more room in our dining room, I wanted to do a rustic centerpiece and I couldn't decide between these two, so I decided to do a hybrid. Now you're gonna need a box to start out with and this at Hobby Lobby is like 770 on sale, but I had a ton of scrap wood, so I wanted to show you how I just made my own to get it out of my garage. I have this one by six that was a random length that Alex had left over from the desk he built. So I measured that on a one by four to create the two sides. I just cut a piece flush with the long side of my bottom of my box and I did that twice. So as you can see here, it's coming together. Then I just needed a piece to go across the entire end. So I cut two more of those and my box was coming together. I made sure to give it a good sand so all of the edges were flat. And then I used my nail gun to do the two long sides and then the two ends so everything would fit into place. I stained it in early American and let that dry. Now let's talk about little pulls on the end. I like to go to the gate latch section in Home Depot and get these. They're cheaper than the drawer pulls for inside your house and I really like this matte black look. Measure your ends, make sure that it's centered both horizontally and vertically, and then use a drill or you can hand do it to put them into the outside of your box. So now that we have our box, we're gonna need some black candlesticks. You can get these from really anywhere. Hobby Lobby has them, Target has them, but I decided to go with Dollar Trees. I grabbed five, so one big one, two medium and two small, so I had kind of a cascading effect on either side. You're also gonna want some greenery. I decided to go with four each of three different kinds of picks from Walmart. These are $1.28, so they are around the Dollar Tree price. And you could probably do with less or you could definitely do it with a different kind, but I wanted to make sure this was full. So I'm fluffing my first set of four and putting them in the four corners. Then I'm gonna fluff my next set, which is not flocked at all. I like to mix flocked and non-flocked, but you could do what you feel. I added these around the middle section and then I finished it off with some flocked ones with red berries. The last ones now are just making sure that everything's kind of full and you're not seeing the bottom of that box. So here's how it looks. I love the cascade effect of the little candlesticks and what if you want to have light to it? I love these LED candles that I have been talking about from Amazon all the time. I got them for Halloween but they come with this awesome little remote. You can turn them on and off. They're just powered by AAA batteries. You can turn up or down the brightness of them. You can set them on a timer. I am just excited to use them year round. This thing looks beautiful. It would be so pretty, especially in the center of your table if you're hosting or just on a console table and it matches those handles, the black of the candlesticks with the handle. I love it. That's gonna do it for this installment of Kirkland's Dupes. I just love these videos and you guys have embraced them as well. So as always, head down to the comments, let me know your favorite project. I totally appreciate when you tell me you can't pick a favorite, but if I made you pick 
what would it be? You could only make one project from the video. Let me know. That is the best feedback that I can use to learn from you guys and make more content that you want to see and projects you want to recreate. Also, while you're down there leaving me a comment, be sure to check the description box for more information on the free Upside app. To get started, you can download that free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And when you're signing up, use code WIT my name, W-H-I-T, for $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. So all of that will be linked in the description for you. Thanks so much for watching. A huge thank you to my craft buddies. If you're not on the list yet, be sure to hit subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.